So based on how I look, how do you think last night went? <laughs> last night. I knew it was going to be cold again, you know. I was prepped for my lesson the night before. So I put on my smart wool socks over my really thick fuzzy socks and I'm inside a 35 degree sleeping bag, which means it's fit for 35 degrees and above. I have a wool long sleeve sweater on over another jersey. I have a hat on. I have down gloves on. Those are all the changes that I made from the night before. Thinking I would be cozy. I froze my ass off. toes. Couldn't feel my toes. I still can't feel my big toe. I woke up. I'm, I was actually a little nervous thinking, well, what happens when your feet fall asleep for a long period of time and you're not there to wake them up? I mean, I was up all night long. It was so cold that I was zipping my, I was trying to get inside my sleeping bag as best I could. I was zipping it all the way up and there's still a little slit. If you pull it, there could be like, like a little slit like that. I was taking, I took my pillow and put it like this. <laughs> I put it in the, underneath against my face to cover to, that slit because it was that cold to breathe in. So I didn't sleep. It's 8.30 in the morning. I'm waking up. It's like, it's not good when you're, you're not getting sound sleep and I'm biking so much and I'm so tired. And then you're in dead heat, sweating your ass off all day. And then you're, you're fucking freezing at night. So I don't know what it is up with Idaho. I mean, I have freaking double socks on thick wool, smart wool. I wool. I'm wearing wool. Oh, and I have a puffy vest on over this stuff. This is insane. And, and there's no snow. It's, I'm not in a blizzard outside. It was $350 sleeping bag. Maybe this sleeping bag is just really that shitty. I didn't have any food left because I added an extra day, but I just unzipped my bag and I found a molasses cookie that I bought at this daily bakery that I totally forgot about. And I'm so happy I forgot about it. What else I found? This sweet package from four kind people. They were part of when I left my phone and sunglasses. Another generous gift from strangers. Can you see that? Those are water beads inside my X-Ped sleeping pad. I've only used this three times and I'm very careful not to spit when I blow in the hole. Bacteria will grow if water's trapped in there. Maybe these things, it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. That little bit that gets in night after night, it's trapped inside plastic. So what is it supposed to do? Just did another hike a bike. My Keens, they have zero traction. So they just slide. It doesn't have anything to do with them being used. They were slippery even when they were brand new. But I love how they are very comfortable on my feet and I have wide feet, so they work that way, but they don't work for hiking on the gravelly, slippery hills. From a distance, it doesn't really necessarily look like a climb and then you turn around and you're like, oh, I'm on a hill. No wonder I'm dying. Every time I think it's almost over, I'm gonna find out it's not. <laughs> I think I've gotten off my bike 12 times in eight miles. It's already 12.30. The guy in Chalice is probably wondering what the hell happened to me since he's like, you know, it's light out until 10 o'clock. He texted that yesterday. I don't care if it's light out until 3 a.m. When your legs are done, they're done. I've seen plenty of burned fields, not with these huge boulders left over with all these beautiful purple flowers against the black burnt trunks. So gorgeous. I just pulled over for them to pass me. I said to the guy, how much more climbing is there? I don't know, we've never been here before, but I have a rope. You want to hold on? We'll pull you up the mountain. And I said, trust me, that's tempting. He goes, well, do you want us to show you the map to see how far until I dump out where I'm supposed to like roll into chalice? I said, no, I think, I think I'm better off not knowing. You know, I'm bitching a little now because you know, I'm still out of shape. I know I have somebody waiting for warm showers and I was supposed to have arrived yesterday. Yeah, this is a pain in the ass. It's hot, pushing your bike all this way up these 9% grades, but forest is right up against you. Barely any traffic on this road, kicking dirt. It's so beautiful and there's water nearby. Do you see him? 
the rock crab family. There they are, mama, papa, and their two rock babies. I finally took a look at what I was climbing over the last nine miles, what the grade is, six to 9%. I feel much better now about myself because I thought, gosh, am I already toast? Today's my fifth day. When I'm walking, I'm only going two miles an hour. And when I'm biking, I'm only going like six miles per hour. I'm a whole day behind. I was freezing this morning and now I'm sweating my ass off. Those people just handed me a bottle of water and they told me that I'm just starting the climb. Are you kidding me? I'm at 8,200 feet and the peak is at 9,300. So I have, you know, you have to do the math. I'm too tired. Do you know what I need? That one thing that you've seen on a regular basis on dirt roads. What is that? It's a freaking pickup truck over the last three hours. I have not seen one. And now that I know I have a 1200 foot push my 35 pound packed 22 pound bike, 54 pound, is that right? Three, up a freaking hill. I'm ready to wave the white flag. So that's what we're gonna wish to all the little stink bugs that I've saved over the years. Send me a pickup truck that doesn't have anything in the back. I surrender. The spot where the woman handed me the water was like literally four minutes down this hill. So I'm coming up and I'm noticing like a steep decline up ahead. And then I see this sign. She said that we were at 8,200 feet, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8. There's no way we went 600 feet in elevation in those last few minutes. And the other major thing, do you see what it says? Mill Creek Summit. It's a summit sign, which means we're here, which means this should just be going down. Now, because this could be very exciting. I feel a moment of elation that we're, we're done. She looked at her phone. She's like, we're at 82. You have a 1200 foot climb ahead of you. Oh no, we're not at the summit. You got a ways to go. We're just starting. Maybe she was psyching me out. Maybe she said that because she knew it was like literally a few minutes ahead of me thinking uh, I'm gonna be extra happy when I reach it. And it worked if that was her objective. Maybe there's two summits. I hope not. I hope she was psyching me out. Anyway, let's just start going down this hill. Let's just hope it keeps going down. Yeehaw! That was a blast. Oh my gosh. Like six miles. The first part was like probably average 10% grade. It was a little sketchy. You know, you're flying down and this was more in the forest area. You know, the shadows, you can't see the rivets. You go through a few of those rivets flying and you go airborne, you boom, because your bike weighs so much and then you skid out. It could be a blast if I was in my neighborhood, but I can't afford to get hurt this early in the trip. So I was breaking and being careful. Just so much fun. So I don't know what the story is with that lady. I don't know if you can see behind me, but this is just, I started to come up again. So hopefully it just peters out up there. This is like my first serious climb, first dirt one, hike a bike, summit, just great physical test of what I have ahead of me for the next six weeks. I'm getting nervous. I passed a guy and he's like, yeah, it just goes up for a little bit and then it shoots down. I don't know about you, but it certainly doesn't look like it's shooting down. Oh, curves. Oh my gosh. Finally done climbing. Finally made it through this gorgeous mountain range. Don't forget, I didn't do any biking with bags before I left. So although there's a lot of climbs, it was extra hard for me because I'm out of shape. This is like, you're just getting started at the gym. You know how it sucks at the beginning? And you jumped right into the heavy weights. It's perfect that I'm landing at a warm shower. My body needs two days of like not moving. Time to go down. Downtown Chalice. No sidewalk town. I think I have a wasp in my helmet. Somebody's there crawling around. Oh, I'm so afraid. Ugh. My first warm shower. I've never <laughs> craved pasta in my life to go out to eat and spend money on noodles. We just looked up three restaurants, called them even, and no one has any pasta on their menu. What does that mean when the town of Chalice doesn't eat pasta? Here's John and I. We're ready to go out and not eat pasta. Yeah, not eat pasta. <laughs> we are going to have our meat tonight because apparently that is the big thing here in Chalice. That and seafood for some reason. We're not even remotely close to an ocean, but seafood seems to be on every menu, but not pasta. Here's the one out of five restaurants in town. Here we are eating underneath the, <laughs> the deadheads. 
You're all back where we can barely see you, but anyway, we got the chicken strips. We had to be after our 18 trips to the bar to get butter. We didn't have silverware, but we needed more sour cream. We didn't have ketchup. <laughs> so we're finally eating. Yay! Okay, I'm gonna shut up now and stand up and try to get my big toe to wake up. 